Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is efficacy and effectiveness of the top five COVID-19 vaccines. My name is Abu Zad Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Action. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport action. Okay, COVID-19 vaccines. Probably this is the hottest subject ever worldwide these days. From the moment they decided to develop vaccines to help end this pandemic up today, worldwide, governments, news outlets, and social media are throwing many numbers at the public. And the public, they are sort of confused about those numbers. The purpose of this presentation is to increase public awareness and let them know what those numbers are where they come from and what they mean. To create this presentation, we have used 11 recently published peer-reviewed articles, two reports, one from the Pfizer, one from Imperial College London in the UK, and six medical books in epidemiology, medical statistics, and research methodology. And you can find these references at the end of this presentation and also in the description of this video. This presentation is going to be in two parts. In part one, briefly, I'm going to explain five terms related to vaccines. In fact, if you do not understand those five terms, the second part will not make sense much. And in the second part, we're going to review together efficacy and effectiveness of the top five COVID-19 vaccines based on peer-reviewed studies. Okay, let's go with part one. Let's review together five terms about vaccines. These five terms in medicine in general apply to any vaccines, but in this presentation we mean COVID-19 vaccines. These five terms are efficacy, effectiveness, relative risk reduction, absolute risk reduction and NNTV or number needed to vaccinate to prevent just one case of COVID-19. Let's go with first two. In epidemiology, in medical statistics and in research methodology, efficacy and effectiveness are not the same and you cannot use them interchangeably. And unfortunately, these days we see a lot, and even by some practitioners, that efficacy and effectiveness are used synonymously. They are not the same, and you cannot use them synonymously. In medicine, efficacy means how well an intervention or a treatment works under ideal controlled conditions, such as that in clinical trials. But effectiveness means how well an intervention or a treatment works in real life situations such as that in communities and societies an intervention or a treatment may have higher efficacy but lower effectiveness relative risk reduction what is relative risk reduction it is the proportion by which an intervention reduces the risk of exposure to a disease or an event. Absolute risk reduction is the proportion by which an intervention removes or eliminates the risk of exposure to a disease or an event. And in NTV, it's definitely obvious from its definition. It is the number needed to vaccinate to prevent just one case of COVID-19. How do we calculate NNTV in medicine? This is how we calculate. NNTV equals 1 divided by absolute risk reduction. It is interesting to know that in medicine, efficacy equals to relative risk reduction and effectiveness equals to NNTV. Now you know these five terms. The second part is going to make more sense. Let's go with part two.
It is time together we review efficacy and effectiveness for the top five COVID-19 vaccines. I'm sure you know those vaccines. They are Pfizer, Moderna, Sputnik V from Russia, J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca. For each vaccine, I'm going to put the numbers and values for efficacy or relative risk reduction, absolute risk reduction, and NNTV, the number needed to vaccinate to prevent just one case of COVID-19. I'm going to put many numbers in the chart on the board for you. They come from 11 recently published peer-reviewed articles and two reports. Let's go with the numbers. According to an article published in the Lancet Medical Journal on April 2021, which is reference number one in our list, here are the numbers. Efficacy for Pfizer vaccine is 95% for Moderna 94% for Sputnik V 91% for J&J 67% and for AstraZeneca vaccine 67% based on this article absolute risk reduction for Pfizer vaccine is 0.84% for Moderna is 1.2% for Sputnik V is 0.93% for J&J 1.2% for AstraZeneca is 1.3% what about NNTV what about the number needed to vaccinate to prevent one more case of COVID-19? This is how we're going to calculate. One divided by these numbers. One divided by this number, you're going to get 119. That simply means if 119 people get fully vaccinated by the Pfizer vaccine, this is going to prevent one more case of COVID-19. 1 divided by this number, you're going to get 83, but the article has put 81, and I'm going to put 81. And the NNTV for Sputnik V is 108. For J&J vaccine is 84, and for AstraZeneca is 78 people. What about other studies and reports? Let me show you what other studies have found. There is a study from Canada, from University of Waterloo. They published an article on February 26, 2021. They found that efficacy for uh, Pfizer vaccine is 95, for Moderna is 94, but they found that absolute risk reduction uh, for these two vaccines, they are definitely lower than these two numbers. Based on a uh, study from University of Waterloo, uh, absolute risk reduction for Pfizer was 0.7% and for Moderna was 1.1%. In that case, the number for NNTV is going to change. One divided by this number, we're going to get 143. That means based on Canadian study, if 143 people get fully vaccinated by the Pfizer vaccine, this is going to prevent one more case of COVID-19. And for Moderna, definitely this number uh, is going to jump to 90. There is another study which was published actually last week, a joint study from the Netherlands, Poland, and Germany. They published a study about the effectiveness of Pfizer vaccine on June 24, 2021. Based on this study, which is reference number 11 in our list, the NNTV for Pfizer vaccine is you are not going to believe 202 
700 people. An article from Russia was published in the PubMed on February 2021. Based on that one, the efficacy for Sputnik V was 91.6%, which is definitely really close to this one. And also another article was published in the PubMed from Romania. This article was published on March 24, 2020. Based on this article from Romania, efficacy for Pfizer was 95, for Moderna was 94, but based on this article, efficacy for AstraZeneca vaccine was not 67%, was much higher. They reported 81%. What about reports? There is a report from Imperial College London in the UK. They published a report on May 5, 2021. Basically, they were evaluating the roadmap out of lockdown. So they published the report, which is 27 pages. On that report, they say uh, efficacy for Pfizer vaccine actually is not 95%. They reported 86% and they reported for AstraZeneca 63%. There is a one more report that comes basically from uh, the Pfizer itself. Last December, to be exact, December 10, 2020, the Products Advisory Committee of the Pfizer, they had a meeting and they published the report, which is 92 pages. In that report, they keep saying that efficacy for the Pfizer vaccine is 95%. And there's a nowhere in the report to give you any numbers or values about uh, absolute risk reduction or NNTV. Why? Because these two numbers, they are not that impressive. It is interesting that in that 92 pages report, the word efficacy has been repeated 199 times but the word effectiveness has been repeated just six times. As you can see from this chart that we created based on 11 articles and two reports, the Pfizer vaccine has the highest efficacy, but it has the lowest effectiveness. On the other hand, for the AstraZeneca vaccine, even though it has the lowest efficacy, but actually it has the highest effectiveness. Unfortunately, in many studies, especially those that come from big pharma themselves, they focus mostly on efficacy or relative risk reduction. Why? Because these numbers are big and they look very impressive. They tend to ignore absolute risk reduction because these numbers are very small and they are not impressive at all. Focusing only on relative risk reduction and ignoring or eliminating absolute risk reduction is going to lead something in medicine we call outcome reporting bias, which is going to affect the interpretation of vaccine efficacy and public confusion. This is why when making uh, decisions for public health, such as choosing what type of vaccines to purchase, it is extremely important to have a full picture of what data really show. And also, it is very important that uh, government officials, medical practitioners, and if possible, news outlets to understand fully the differences between efficacy and effectiveness just to avoid confusion. Now you know the differences between efficacy and effectiveness and their values for the top five COVID-19 vaccines. There are three more vaccines left. Two from China, Sinopharm and Sinovac, and one from India. Anytime we have all the information we needed about them, we're going to be back with another video for you. Something important at the end. I always say science is like water. Water pollutes and stinks if it remains stagnant and doesn't ebb and flow, much like science. Science will also pollute and corrupt if it's not questioned and challenged and given room to follow. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss our next video, you can subscribe to the CSSN channel 
on YouTube. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.